American flute at yoga sessions can be a lot of fun. It can also give you a lot of practice. I had the opportunity uh, to play at a number of yoga sessions over a two-month period. Um, we were in a place that had dozens of yoga sessions every week, and I sort of had my pick. And uh, I played uh, two or three times a week, and it was an awful lot of so fun. Gave me a lot of practice. Um, the recording, uh, the, the opening music that you heard was a recording done at, uh, at one of those yoga sessions. And um, uh, I, I just want to give an outline of some suggestions and, and what I think the, a good protocol is uh, for doing this and uh, accessing it. And uh, uh, the first thing I would say is um, you're going to offer your, your, your services, right? And that's really the way to think of it. Offer your services to a session leader um, and make sure, reinforce the idea with them that it's their session and they're in control, right? Think of it from the yoga session leader's point of view. Um, they don't know who you are. They don't quite know what kind of music you make. Uh, if they see you come in with a Native American flute, they may or may not be familiar with Native flutes, and they're not quite sure what's going to happen. But if you reinforce the idea that you're there to support the session, and that means they're in control, and give them that control. Say, I'll play, but if at any point you're not comfortable, if at any point you'd like me to stop for any reason at all, just give me the signal and I will join the session with everybody else and I'll do yoga for the rest of the session and I'll be perfectly happy. You don't have to worry at all for any reason and actually give them a signal. And, you know, I mean, might not be the best signal. Maybe it's something like, um, take both your hands and reverse C is a common uh, choir symbol to end smoothly. They could even do it with one hand and you'll watch out for that signal. And then just take the cue and join the rest of the session. Um, to that end, I will often sit on the same um, equipment that the yoga people are sitting on. Well, they often sit on a yoga mat, so instead of that, I'll sit on maybe one of those rectangular square cushions, a zavaton, and uh, in the center is a zafu, kind of a pillow that sits you up a little bit, and uh, that's close enough. You know, that's done for meditation, and uh, some yoga sessions uh, do use uh, equipment like that. So you're at the same level. Um, if you need to sit in a chair, that's fine, but maybe put that chair right against the wall so you're not, you know, noticeably above everybody else's heads. Um, and um, then if you become part of the yoga session, if you get the signal, you can just, you know, seamlessly join the yoga without, you know, being obtrusive or being obvious. Um, you could also give the session leader volume control. You can give them a way to say quieter, or, you know, I've had uh, yoga teachers go, <laughs> you know, like that, right? Maybe they could do that for meaning more, you know, or this is a good way to do it. If, you, if they just do this, you're not quite sure where they are in the air, right? But this gives you a relative kind of thing, you know, that's kind of useful. Um, when I start playing, I often start softly. I'll often start with low tones. Actually, I'll often start with wind sounds. Take your flute and put it up to your lips and breathe into the finger holes. Uh, maybe the second and third or the third and fourth. Like that, very soft sounds. And then start with low notes and long tones. the kind of way to do it. Um, also playing sparsely. I played long tones there and I didn't actually demonstrate it, but the spaces between those phrases, I leave a lot of space. Right? Maybe I'm playing only two-thirds of the time when I'm playing. And the real goal is I'm trying to play between the leader's instructions. And when the leader is speaking, well, there's different styles of leaders. Some leaders will kind of talk continuously, so you're kind of playing over the top of them. Keep an eye on them, see if they're comfortable with that, you can tell. And some leaders will talk 
and say and let people do it. And that's what I'll be playing when they're doing it. And when the leader is talking, I'll go into something, either I'll be silent or I'll go into something more sparse. Right? Now, what am I doing there? I'm using short notes. Let's say you're playing away, you're playing long tones, and then all of a sudden the, the, the leader starts speaking. It's like, whoa, I'm, I'm not finished with my phrase. Hey, wait a minute. No, no. Okay, it is you in service of the group. How do you handle that? How do you finish your phrase musically? Just go to short notes. So you could... As they go into talking, you're not being so obtrusive over their talking, right? Um, you're interleaving, you're using staccato notes, you're following the action of what's happening. You are part of the session. Even though you're not doing yoga, or maybe you could even try doing yoga. I've actually tried doing some yoga with my ankles while playing. Uh, that's a challenge. But you are following the action, and that means you're following the, the, the energy that the leader is um, putting into the session. Or the leaders energize a session, often very low at the beginning, and then they'll often bring it up maybe halfway through the session to a maximum where people are working harder, and that is you're putting in more energy. You're right there with the energy of the session. You're putting more energy into your playing, right? And then typically towards the end, they'll often bring it down, maybe even totally quiet at the end. Maybe people are sitting in Shavasana, you know, just doing meditation. Um, and you might play during that, or you might be quiet. You'll get a cue from the leader. Um, often, uh, I, I've had uh, leaders, you know, just say, keep on going during Shavasana, or they'll say, in one case, uh, she said, and now we'll all be quiet for, you know, uh, and that's, that's a cue to, we'll all be quiet, and we'll all do Shavasana, and then you can join them in that, uh, that meditation. Um, the, the energy is also... Uh, you can echo the energy based on whether you're playing low in the scale or high in the scale. Often I'll, you know, if there's an exercise that involves this and this and this and this, where people's hands are low and high, I'll often go low and high in the scale in my melody. And people seem to, seem to actually like that. Um, another opportunity, and this I did with trepidation in the beginning and it worked out well, um, is to get up and walk around. This does take some practice. Before you do it in a yoga session, practice it at home. Take your flute and walk around playing your flute as if you're at a meditation session, which means you have to be really steady on your feet. You have to be really balanced and mindful. Okay, there's a a branch of Qigong called walking Qigong, or Qigong walking, that's what it is. It's Qigong walking, which is a Qigong exercise, um, which involves a particular way to step on your heel and the ball of your foot uh, with each foot in turn. Practice that if you can, or any way that you can move around comfortably, solidly, while playing, and not hit your flute on anything. If you hit the foot, hit the foot of your flute on anything while you're walking, you will knock your teeth out. It has happened to people. So please be very careful and absolute paramount rule, don't step on anybody. And you should be solid enough so you can walk a very circuitous route around people's ankles and wrists and bottles and uh, uh, yoga mats and cushions, you know, the square block cushions and have no trouble doing that. If it's too crowded in the room, don't do it, right? Don't mess with anybody. Um, low flutes, what, what should I play? Low flutes or high flutes? Of course the uh, uh, default is low flutes. Uh, they're more meditative sounding, they're more... However, um, I began with the only flute I had with me at the time. The first time I did this, and the second and third time, I only had one flute, which was a mid-range G minor flute, fairly high, and it worked. Um, I was self-conscious, this is too loud, this is too high, and I worked like that first session, especially 
okay, how do I play and make this work? And I was using shorter notes and I was using shorter phrases and I was playing as lightly as possible. People loved it. People loved it. Um, the, the important thing I think is to have a flute that does not cut out at low volumes. When you have a flute that you're ending your note, you want to end it smoothly and quietly. You don't want a flute that's going to uh, go down quietly and then suddenly stop because of the flute. You want one that ends fairly smoothly. You know, there are flutes that maybe sound like, I'll try to uh, emulate, they sort of cut out at the end because of the flute itself. And so check that, uh, that's an important thing. And this also brings up um, the topic of backing tracks, okay? Do you play solo or do you play with backing tracks? What you heard at the beginning is from, um, I actually have that up on a, a website uh, I have a web page, uh, clintgoss.com slash uh, yoga.html, and uh, that's a page that has uh, sound samples for yoga teachers of my playing at sessions over backing tracks. And that's when I come in with, if I'm playing over backing tracks, I'm coming in with you know something more than a flute. I'm coming in with a, a, a mic stand, because I have to mic my flutes, and it's got kind of festooned all over it. It's got a mixer sitting on it. It's got my iPod sitting on it. You know, it's got, actually got a little place for a speaker. I put a little uh, Bose speaker up front uh, if they don't have a sound system. When you walk in with that, there's even more of a question. It's like, whoa, what's, uh, what's happening here? What's this music going to be? And so I have that uh, web page, and you're free to go and uh, you know, use that as a model if you want to um, put up a web page with the kinds of uh, flute playing that you would do or you do at yoga sessions and have fun with this, uh, explore and uh, expand your music. <laughs>